What's up YouTube? Today's video is going to be another one in my ring making tutorial series. This week we're going to be using Damascus steel to make our ring. So as far as the whole ring making process goes, it's pretty simple. It's very similar to just making it out of regular steel or any other material. But where it gets complex is in actually first finding the material and picking what material you want. There's a few different patterns and things you want. I'll have links in the description like I do in every single one of my videos to where you can find these. Um, there's a ton of different patterns and I'll have a bunch of different suppliers listed. And then the second thing that makes these kind of tricky is in etching them and getting the pattern to show because you can see the patterns on this because it's been etched. But where I've cut this off, there's no more pattern because we haven't etched the steel. And the way Damascus steel actually works is that they layer two different types of steel together and one of them will dissolve quicker than the other. I think that has to do with the carbon content. The less carbon it has, the faster it'll dissolve. So we're gonna make a ring, and it's just gonna look like a normal steel ring. And then we're gonna drop it in that acid for a few minutes, and it's gonna eat away one of those layers, and it'll create these ridges. And then we can do a couple different techniques to try to bring some contrast out and make it look even cooler than just a plain etch on it. So the actual process of making it's going to be really simple. I'll check back in with you guys after I'm done shaping it on the lathe and then I'll just explain how some of the etching works, how you want to use some of the acids and then a couple of the ways that we're going to get this pattern to show. So let's hop over to the lathe now. Alright, now we've got the ring shaped how we want it. I'm just going for a flat, um, just pipe shaped ring. And then I went and I chamfered the inside edges to help make it a bit more comfortable. And then I sanded it to make sure I don't have any major defects in it because that'll be harder to get rid of later after we've etched it in the acid. And to etch it, all we're doing, we're just using some ferric chloride. You can buy this on Amazon. There's a link in the description. And I've got a jar full of it here. And depending on how long you leave it in there is how deep the etch will be. So you can mess around with that, but I like to do it for about 20 or 30 minutes. And that leaves it, it's still pretty shallow. But I like the look of it. So I'm going to put this in here and in 30 minutes I'll just come back to take it back out. So you just drop it in and it's done. Okay, so it's been about 30 minutes since I put that in here. I've got this jar of water here and then these paper towels ready. And all I've got here is just a nail with a magnet attached to it and that's just to get the ring back out. So I'm just going to put that in here. 
got that here. I'm just going to put that right in the water, swirl it around to get rid of any of that excess acid on there. And then just dry it off with the paper towels. Swirl that in the water again. But right now, there's still, everything in here has the same texture and the same color and everything. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a black oxide coating. That'll help add to the contrast. That's an optional step. What you could do now is just put it back on the lathe and then just lightly sand it. And that'll make the edges and the raised sections shiny. And then the other spots will be more matte. And so you'll be able to see it better that way as well. But we're going to do two steps just to get even better contrast. Okay, to do a black oxide finish is actually really simple. All you need, I've got a can here and that's just got some motor oil in it. And then you'll need a blowtorch and then your ring and I'm using pliers to hold it. And all you gotta do is you heat it up till it's red hot and then you just quench it in the oil and that causes it to get a black oxide coating. And so you'll just see how that works. Alright, I'm going to use that same nail with the magnet stuck on it, grab that back out, and there you can see it's got a really dark finish on it. That's just what we wanted. I'll dry it off again with the paper towel. All right, now you can see we've got that really dark finish on there. Some people might like this look. It's a lot more subtle. But we're going to take it one step further and then just going to sand these top edges down, give it a little bit more contrast. One thing I'll mention is that I've got this piece of sandpaper and I just mounted it onto this lathe bit. I just did that because it's a flat piece of metal. And what that'll do is that'll make sure our sandpaper is completely flat. And so when we go to sand our ring, we put the sandpaper up against it. It's not going to bend how sandpaper normally would. And that way we can avoid um, scratching away the oxide layer on places where we don't want to scratch it away. So we're just going to get the raised edges on there. All right, now here the ring is completely finished. You can see how that pattern turned out. You can see the brighter spots on it are where I sanded away the black oxide layer and exposed the shiny metal. And so that's what adds to that contrast. I'll show you it on my finger here too. And I just did a very simple plain band for this one because I wanted the Damascus to really show. So I was just going for more surface area over anything else. So if you're trying it out, you can do something a little different, maybe do some fancier designs or whatever. But that's pretty much it for this video, guys. If you want a better look at the ring, I'm going to show a bunch of photos that you can check out at the end. 
And if you're interested in supporting my channel, that helps me out a lot because these videos take a lot of time for me and then it can be pretty expensive. And so if you're interested in helping me out, there's a bunch of different ways. I have a Patreon account. There'll be some cards that pop up here that you can go to my website, you can buy a ring, you can go to my Patreon, and then also just those links in the description. Amazon actually pays me a percentage of your payment. And so when you go to try to make your own ring, if you buy some ferric chloride off Amazon, they'll actually give me a small percentage of that. So that's just a really easy way if you guys are interested in supporting me in any way. But anyways, just check any of those out. I'll show a bunch of the photos, and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.